Welcome to Lunch with Legacy Leaders, a weekly talk show with local and national thought leaders on issues impacting the black community. Now introducing our host, Ms. Anne-Marie Sorrell. Good afternoon and welcome to Lunch with Legacy Leaders. I'm your host, Anne-Marie Sorrell, President and CEO of the Mosaic Group. <clears throat> I'm super excited about our show today. Um, as you know, we cover so many important issues in our community. Um, and today we get to not only cover an issue in our community, but an issue that's happening abroad. But before we get started, I'd like to uh, thank our sponsors for making this broadcast possible. Thank you to Broward Health, AARP, the Solid Waste Authority of Palm Beach County, and African American Black Alzheimer's Disease Initiative at the John P. Hussman Institute for Human Genomics, University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. If you or someone you know is experiencing loss of memory or memory problems, please contact their research team for more information at 877-686-6444. Now today I am joined by several special guests um, and our first guest is Guy Francois, who's a former minister, Haitian living abroad. We have Tamara Rodriguez, who's the principal and chief financial officer for Tima Group. Regine M. Francois, who's the founder and executive director of Haiti STEM Alliance. And Gilbert Fevery, uh, MBA entrepreneur and real estate investor. Welcome and welcome and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mary. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, there's so much happening in Haiti, but before we dive into our, our conversation, I want to have each of you just share briefly a little bit about your background and your organization. So we'll start with Guy. Yes, thank you, Anne-Mary. Um, my name is Guy Francois and born and raised in Haiti and came to study here, studied in finance and then became a consul at the Consulate General of Haiti and Miami. And then lastly, became Minister of Haitian Living Abroad, then citizenship with President Job Del Moïse. Awesome, thank you. Tamara. Hi, Anne-Marie. Uh, my name is Tamara Billiard Rodriguez. I was born in Haiti, moved to the, to the United States when I was 10 years old, have lived here ever since. Very active with the Haitian community here in South Florida. I am the CFO of Fatima Group, which specializes in three industries, hospitality, uh, media, and shipping. And so uh, we are uh, the majority shareholders of Island TV, which is the only uh, Afro-Caribbean television network in the country. And so we are proud to be able to inform our community about what's happening in Haiti. Awesome, thank you. Gilbert. Hi, uh, my name is Gilbert. Uh, Fabio, as you said, um, been here 22 years, uh, most of my adult life, so to speak. Um, came here, studied uh, business uh, with a focus on marketing and um, launched um, in 2017 my own uh, real estate investment firm, the Red Key Capital. We invest uh, in buying and restoring property, but also uh, buy and hold as well. Um, we uh, have a background in marketing. Um, we do anything in between traditional marketing and digital marketing. I've been an executive uh, marketer, prof marketing professional for about 15 years now, and I have worked for the Seminole tribe and headed the uh, the marketing department there for the um, Seminole tourism um, as well. So um, we're here to talk about Haiti, and um, I'm, I'm happy to be here and and you know being joined by you know wonderful people, Asian people who are as concerned as I am to uh, make sure that the country is now on the path of uh, economic development. Absolutely, thank you, Regine. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Regine Francois, uh, born and raised in Haiti. I started in a nonprofit named Pennies for Haiti soon after the earthquake, the first earthquake, and um, been working with children since. I moved back to Haiti in 2013 and have been what they call the boots on the ground. So I'm very happy to meet everyone and uh, a pleasure to be invited here and speak of our efforts, uh, relief efforts for for the victims of, um, and look forward to our conversation. 
Thank you. Thank you all. Um, you know, before we dive into today's challenges of Haiti, which we know are um, many, you know, there are some people who really don't understand the significance of, of, of Haiti and the Haitian community um, on so many levels or just the, the rich history and culture of Haiti. So I wanted each of you to just highlight one um, cultural and historical context of Haiti just to share with our audience because it's often just um, such negativity around Haiti and, and our Haitian brothers and sisters. And I know that there's so, so much more vast history, culture, and greatness. And so I wanted to just really kick this conversation off with each of you um, sharing a, a, a great historical context of Haiti. And I'll start with you. Yes, um, like, like you said, um, Haiti has a unique history and we're, we're very rich in culture. We're the first black republic. And when, when you say that there's a lot of negative um, news coming from Haiti, I could say most of the negative comes from the capital of the country. But the, Haiti has 10 departments. For example, where Tama is from in the northern side, I can tell you in 2014, we had our first commercial flight. So we have a, a decentralization problem because Haiti is a very beautiful country. The South that has been impacted, I remember Dwayne Wade and, and, and Chris Bosch, they all went on vacation in Ilavash in the Southern uh, uh, Department of, the Haiti, of Haiti to show you how beautiful um, the southern side is is so I think we have a lot of positive things to say, but they always concentrate on the politics and also the Puerto Prince side. But we have ten departments and we have a virgin country. I can say, thank you. Thank you, Guy. Tamara. There's so many, so it's really hard to say one, but I will say one that I think not a lot of people know is that in 1779, there was a battle here in the Revolutionary War, the United States Revolutionary War, uh, and there was a battle called the Battle of the Siege of Savannah. And at the Siege of Savannah, you had freed Haitian slaves that came to volunteer to fight the Revolutionary War in the United States. And so I think a lot of people don't know that, and it just to show um, how we were trailblazers, we were leaders, but we also helped the United States way before um, the United States helped us, right? So I think that's a little known fact. Thank, thank you for that little known fact. Gilbert? Um, I would go a little bit not too far off back in history, something that is somewhat recent. Um, at the beginning of the massive migrations of Haitian, Haitian leaving Haiti and establish themselves uh, in different parts of the world. Uh, folks don't, don't, don't usually think of the fact that we, when we left, so many professionals, especially uh, teachers, who went to Canada, uh, parts of Europe, in, in Belgium, and in, in Africa, and, and helped building the uh, um, education system there and teach people how to read and help Africa uh, uh, to become what they, 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 they now are still struggling to become, but we help in the process. And I think this is something that we need to remember that uh, Haitians, we, 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 we always fight to bring people together, but unfortunately uh, it, it's difficult for us to get ourselves together and do what we need to do. Well, thank you, Regine. Uh, I can't agree more with Gibel in honesty <clears throat> because um, I find that being on the ground the, the last few years has been um, has been exactly that. However, I have to say we lose working together is when we bring ourselves together more during the worst part of the of of Haiti's histories, um, the earthquake, um, this earthquake. We tend to come together. We tend to to be homes for other people. The, the truth is there are a lot of people that are saying we're waiting for the US to come and save us. That's not 100% accurate. Um, Haitians came together to actually go and try to save lives in this earthquake. And the same happened in 2010. We might not have all the necessary, 
but we're very resilient and we love each other. And to me, that has been the the grassroots, the our, our roots. Um, there's a famous there's a famous uh, quote that says that no racines so profond et vivace. Our our roots are very profound, and that has been truth no matter what happens in Haiti. We are always there and we always come to each other's aid. And I can't, anytime this has not happened, we we know very well how to stand shoulder to shoulder. It's just that unfortunately it's not shown very well. But when you're on the ground as I am, it's very clear. We, we stand with each other. So we, our culture is all about our love for each other and our love for our country. It's a better opportunity to show it. No, thank you. And, and that is why I wanted to make sure I set the tone um, in a positive direction because we know, as you said, Regine, it is not always seen. And so um, I want to make sure that that we're able to, to share uh, the true context of, of Haiti and our Haitian brothers and sisters here on Lunch with Legacy Theater. So, you know, I know that between Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County, there are thousands of Haitian Americans, roughly, and either of you can answer this question, roughly how many Haitian Americans do we have here in South Florida? I could say yeah. around 300,000 in South Florida. That's a pretty large Sorry, community. <laughs> pretty large community, very significant um, community here in South Florida. And so um, it's it's only right that we try to lend as much support um, here as well as abroad. Now, in recent months, um, as you know, you all know, the people of Haiti has endured a lot um, from, you know, civil unrest with quote unquote gang violence, kidnappings, um, the assassination of President Moyes, um, the earthquake, and then a tropical storm. Um, what is happening on the ground as we speak? How are the people of Haiti right now? Um, Regine, we'll start with you because I know you're right on. You're you're on the ground with your organization. So on the ground, um, well, first of all, pennies for Haiti. Because of our size, we're actually waiting for the second round of relief to to go in because I can't move rocks. I definitely can't mend um, broken bones. So we're waiting to to be there and the first aid has has come through and done their job. So right now we're preparing relief effort, um, for, um, collections of toiletry, collections of clothes, collections of, of food, and obviously um, cash as well, because there's going to be so much for us to, to ship to Haiti. So in that sense, for me, um, I can't say firsthand, this is what I've seen because I have not gone anywhere. But what I am hearing, um, what I'm hearing from all of our groups is that we still can't get to Jeremy because Jeremy, Jeremy is the furthest city um, out that so we can't get into there. Uh, then you have Lekai. Lekai is very affected. And there are cities further out from Lekai that has not received any support as of yet. Um, I have actually a few folks that are over there because I work here you know, with um, with the second half of my NGO, which is Haiti STEM Alliance. So we have a pretty good um, communication system over there to sit, to know that they're still waiting for support. This morning I received. Oh, well, sorry, when I need it. Um, some updated numbers on the death toll. And so we're looking at 2,189 deaths, 12,268 that are hurt, 332 uh, people are presumed missing, and over 77,000 with homes that are basically damaged or completely destroyed. So you can imagine that's, that's like, that's a lot of people that need assistance and the work is a lot. Um, I see, I see the reports from whether it be the doctors or what have you, and everyone are, for that first report, everyone is saying exactly the same thing. They need medical supplies. They need, they need just more hands. Um, but the team that is on the ground is the Haitian team. Uh, I've seen many, 
note from the Haitian doctors that have gone to the provinces, or we have a few NGOs that are on the ground as well that are doing the work. So in, in that sense, there is, an, there is a mobilization that is on the ground that is taking care of the first needs um, necessary to get as many people uh, healed um, and band-aided um, after the following earthquake. Well, thank you. Um, uh, uh, Gilbert, is there anything you'd like to add? Well, I think um, um, the regime has summed up um, a lot of um, things that are going on in Haiti. Those are uh, private citizens trying to help. And uh, the lack of uh, planification and, and, and vision and, 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 uh, and assistance from the government is still being felt in, in Haiti. Although I've seen, based on the information that I'm getting, there are there have been effort to really reach the people uh, um, and the negotiation between the gangs in in Martisan, which is really the uh, the the gateway to get to the southern part of of, of Haiti uh, to get all the uh, assistance to uh, um, to um, to Haiti, but they're, they're, uh, to uh, the people in in Kai and and and, and Jeremy. But there's diff there are also different mode of transport. Uh, that they're using, whether it be uh, the, the sea or using helicopters to get uh, to those places, uh, things are started, uh, you know, coming up, coming up. But my my issue uh, really is uh, the the, uh, the the response of the government that has been really slow, and it seems like they were not prepared. And I, I know for a fact after the 2010 earthquake. Every specialist who went to Haiti and studied the soil, geologists, uh, uh, folks that understand how uh, you know hurricane works, and we know that Haiti is in a tectonic plate, and we know hurricane will happen, and we know he was likely to. And the discussion was something will likely happen within ten years, and we right at the uh, the 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 the, uh, the that the end of that time frame. What have we done in terms of preparing for things, and what 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 is the what was the responsibility of the agency, uh, um, urgency management agency in Haiti to prepare for this and get the response as quickly as possible when that happened? Mind you, they were talking about the northern side as uh, you know likely to have an earthquake. We have something in the southern side of Haiti. So uh, we still have to deal with not only the aftermath of the, uh, the, 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 what just happened and deal with the, the urgency of now bringing things to folks, making sure that they get the kind of assistance that they need. But we also need to think beyond that because we still have a, 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 a likelihood of, 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 of uh, earthquake that may happen in, 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 in a short period of time again in, in the northern side of Haiti, what we're going to do? We need to start thinking about about those things. And I, I uh, the the help that we're getting from the assistance that we're getting from the international community uh, doesn't always translate into something positive on the ground, because those helps are usually routed routed through uh, NGOs and uh, um, and rightfully so because folks are kind of like don't trust the Haitian government because of corruption and, 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 and all the, the things that, you know, going on uh, 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 with the Haitian government. But it can't continue to be that way. We have to, at some point, say, hey, what are we doing now? Uh, it, 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 we always put off, uh, uh, putting up fire. When are we going to start planning to make sure that when things like that happen, we have less people dying, we have, we have the resources that we can mobilize to come to the aid of the people in a timely manner. Absolutely, and, and we're gonna come back to that part of the discussion. So definitely hold that thought um, because we, we wanna come back to, you know, how does the future of Haiti look? How does, sta what does stabilization look like? So definitely hold that thought. I wanna get um, Tamara and Gita chime in. So Tamara. So I wanted to mention that there are about 2 million Haitians around the world. And, you know, that too, as a, as a, as a community, we represent about, uh, we send about $3 billion a year to Haiti. 
okay? And so that makes up approximately 30% of Haiti's GNP. So the point I'm trying to get at is that we, the Haitian diaspora, are in a unique position to help our brothers and sisters in Haiti. And I believe, um, to Regine's point, what we we always come stronger in these moments, and we always uh, rally to ensure that our brothers and sisters in Haiti are are um, know that we're there for them during these times. So what I've learned is the importance of listening to our brothers and sisters on the ground. So it's not only sending money, because we do that. We do so contribute that, that way. What can we do to listen to what they need so we can come and we can assist them? So I like to think that that is where I see the positive and that is where I see the growth is so the, the two million um, Haitians in the diaspora come and together with the Haitians on the ground to walk with them. Not tell them what to do, but walk with them. And I see that that is happening. Uh, we learned from the mistakes that we made in the, in the 2010 earthquake. We learned that it's not about just sending money or giving money to the NGOs or um, deciding what needs to be said, right? Because we made those errors too in the past where we decided, oh, they must need this. They must need that, right? This time around, we're asking them, what do you need? What is going on? How can we help? So I do think that that's a, a way towards uh, a more stable path. I think that is a way towards truly helping the Haitians on the ground. And that's a great point. I, I'm a true believer in, in asking people exactly what they need instead of making assumptions and coordinating efforts that... Um, not saying won't be uh, good, but may not be the most effective. Um, so I, I can appreciate uh, uh, that type of coordination as well. Guy, what, what would you like to add? Yes, uh, me to say as a former minister, just um, in July, I, I was part of, of a lot of task force. And to talk about the rescue team, I can tell you, I, I work really closely with them. Um, just so you know, um, um, the rescue team has 3,000 volunteers, not people that are getting a, a salary, but 3,000 volunteers throughout the country. So those people, they do not get paid. So so um, that that's one. So second of all, um, I know there has been formation for earthquakes and natural disasters. And I can tell you, um, um, the director was telling me um, when they go do the formation and people are like, oh, you guys are just making money. Um, we don't believe in those things, even though after the experience in 2010. So sometimes Haitians could be very negative. They don't believe until they see it happens. And so, so, so that's also when you, when, 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 when you try to prevent People think that you're making money and 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 doing stuff, and whereas it's really important. And I know the president even had a proposal to add class about you know doing prevention for earthquakes and natural disasters. So I think um, working with, with the government is very important, especially the rescue team, because you have two phases. You have the urgency phase where you work with the rescue team that's present in every municipalities and also the municipality districts. So, so to go to Lekai, to go to, to Asavo, to go to Jeremy, for example, you have to work with the elected officials and the different organizations. If not, it becomes a mess. So, so I think it's important to, to, to go that route. For example, you have different organizations here they get in touch with the Ministry of Health, with the, the rescue team de department, and they work together. You know, the point is not having the government do everything, but doing partnerships. Because um, during the earthquake of 2010, there have been a lot of duplications. So you could have a team working there, giving food, and another team giving food, and another team, and, and whereas there were other needs. So I think um, it's important to, to, to relocate everything and have a coordination between the public and private sector. Well, that's a good point. That takes me to, you know, efforts here in on the ground in South Florida, in our region. And, you know, I know that there's so many organizations and individuals 
who oftentimes want to help and they kind of just start doing things and doing relief efforts. And it may be a duplication or it may not be really coordinated, but I see that we do have um, some information as it relates to, you know, how to donate. Um, we have SouthFloridaCaribbeanStrong.org that's coordinating efforts, PSAHaiti.org, um, PIH.org, um, as well as HanoffFlorida.org and ProjectMediaShare.org. So there's so many um, uh, in there for those who are watching, and there's so many others. We have several websites um, here um, in our banner that's running at the bottom. But I want to hear from our panel. Um, what are the relief efforts that you're involved in? How can those who want to assist um, participate? And how do, based on history, um, how do uh, those who want to help uh, ensure that they're participating in legitimate efforts that are going to actually reach and assist the people of Haiti. Um, so I, I'll start with um, Regine. Well, for me, Penny's friend is doing is is working. I'm still trying to figure out how to get an organization to receive things for us. Being here tends to be a little bit more difficult coordinate things on the on the US side. Half of my board is spread around the country, but we don't really have a, a base in Alberta that can actually bring things in. So I'm in contact with a few people to see who can say, could you please gather things for us? And then I'll be in the States in about 60 days to pack everything up and ship them to Haiti. So like I mentioned earlier, we're doing... Um, we're doing drives for toiletry, food, and clothes, um, tents as well. We're partnering up with Food for the Poor so that they can we can see how much food they can give us. At this point, uh, I can't speak for anyone else in terms of legitimacy. That that's that one's a difficult one. Uh, you can't unless you're in the in the know and in the group that's actually running the the program. You can't vouch for them. I think that was probably the biggest issue in 2010. When after the reports were coming in, you were surprised to see which NGO were at the top of the list organizations that just did not do what they said they were going to do or where the money actually went. So I will not be the one vouching for anyone beside myself. Um, we've been working in Haiti since 2010, so I can I, I can for sure at 100% tell you that. Whatever we do, we work for kids. Uh, that has been our focus since day one, and it is still our focus. Make that children are are eating, the children are clean, the children are are going to school, the children. It's it's all about the children. Um, for me, Haiti. If we can't get that generation stabilized, how do we get Haiti stabilized? I don't know about anyone else on this panel. I'm I'm getting ready to retire. That's 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 where I'm heading. So the only thing we can do is make sure that the kids in Haiti are 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 taken care of, and um, that's what Pennies for Haiti is about: making sure that we get generation okay and and moving forward. Um, awesome. Uh, one of you'll see that uh, we use PayPal. It's the simplest one to use um, for donations, but um, we will have um, a a flyer on our website hopefully by the end of this week as long as we can find someone that is willing to coordinate the and gather the the items that are being donated on for the south and we will predominantly be working in lekai that um not lekai sorry but tapima and uh, shadonia that's where we're heading we have a few family members in jeremy that we will be helping mainly because i'm from jeremy but um our, our concentration of effort will be in um, in the Lekai area, and that's that's where it makes more sense for us. Awesome, thank you, Regine. Uh, Tamara. So, for I agree that it's important to ask uh, the right person uh, what organization they are affiliated with or what organization they've worked with in the past. 
for me, for the last 12 years, I've worked with Projet Sainte Anne, which is, I think you have it in the ticker at the bottom, which is PSAHaiti.org. Um, there are in the South, so it's an organization that is familiar with the area. Um, I also think there's a lot of other organizations that do great work. So we don't have to only donate to one. We just have to understand that what the needs are right, right now. So for now, the needs are more medical, right? We need to get people out of there. We need to, to get um, uh, uh, um, stabilized, right? So it's important to help HANA, which is the Haitian Nurses Organization. It's important to help Project MediShare. It's important to help, help the, the doctors and Innovative Health Haiti, for example. All of those organizations that are doing um, help, that are servicing medical needs right now. And after that, we can do the other things that are needed. So um, I'm a big believer in donating to all of the organizations that are on the ground, that have a, a long standing reputation in the area because they're going to facilitate a lot faster than an organization that is on the other side of the country, for example, or that's not in the country. Awesome. Thank you, Samara. Um, uh, uh, Gilbert. Well, I, I would not say to say much then um then 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 uh, reiterate what uh, Tamara just said. Uh, there are organizations that uh, we Haitian people we have been working with and we know they are on the ground servicing those communities directly. Those are the uh, organizations that I will prioritize uh, uh, because they don't get into the uh, bureaucracy of uh, spending you know ninety percent of the money that you send there and your 10% goes to the people. So you want to have a bigger share of every dollar that you spend, every dollar that you donate to go to help the people that are actually in need, not in you know logistics and, and paying folks and people getting rich off uh, the back of the people that are in uh, already in situation um, that, that in the needed uh, situation. So uh, those organizations are well known uh, uh, in the Haitian communities, and I believe uh, uh, Guy can attest to to those. And uh, as as somebody who has been in the government and continue to work with the government, they know the legitimate organization. They know the organization that are underground doing the right thing, and he can actually suggest and 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 vouch for certain organization uh, if he wants to, uh, because he has the uh, the, uh, he's on the pedestal. He had that bird eye view of how things are being done right now and see who's doing what and who's driving results uh, as opposed to not drive, you know, then they are just being there uh, to show their face in cameras. Borgi, they put you on the spot. <laughs> no, um, I can say. Um, by working at the Consulate of Haiti and Miami um, from 2011 to 2017, uh, I can tell you, for example, for Hurricane Matthew, because with the experience in 2010, the Haitian community, we said to ourselves, we're tired of seeing a lot of money being next to Haiti, and then the money goes back, like um, Gilbert just said, into staffing, logistics, people paying a thousand dollars a day for a car, you know, those type of things, they need to stop. So during Hurricane Matthew, I had the experience, I, I had the chance to work with different associations in, in the South where there was um, Hurricane Matthew went, went by and did a lot of damages. So um, I had the chance to work with ANA, the Haitian American Nurses Association, merged with Madodo, which is almost the same thing. Um, um, so seed, ma, e, madodo, which I just mentioned, and also Project MediShare um, with the um, fam, um, Dr. Green and, and Jenna Green. Those people, they are amazing people. I remember there was a, a, a team in the South and there was a young girl, she had cancer spread it in her leg and her leg became so big. And when Jenna saw that tweet, she sent to pick up that girl in Port Salut, and now she's still living. So just to show you, those people, they have not been there just for natural disasters and to say, let's donate. They've been on the field. So I encourage people to, to, to work with them because I know they'll be on the ground 
Gaskov, um, Cozy Joseph Gaskov. Um, it's a it's a foundation from people from the south. So those people, you know, we, with help or without help, they're gonna be in, in in the south of Haiti. So and like I said, and it's always me with my experience and identification and also mass distribution during the COVID. I had the chance to create a structure to work with the um, elected officials from the mayors, the municipality elected officials. Those people are very important because like I said, they have contact with the other officials in their area and also the different organizations. So it's always important because if you go without them, they might have you, they, 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 they might punish you. <laughs> I'm not going to give details, but it's always important to, 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 to let them know that you are in the area because it might cause a lot of problems. You know, you, you mentioned something um, that we had not touched on, and that's COVID. How challenging is it to get, you know, supplies and, and everything um, on the ground with the pandemic the way it is and to ensure that things are sanitized um, that are going into Haiti and we're not essentially bringing the virus into Haiti potentially. So how challenging is that? Um, I don't know who wants to, uh, Guy, if you want to touch on that. Um, I have to say um, um, second, I believe it was second or third week of July. I have to thank um, the American government, the Biden administration, they had sent 500,000 um, um, vaccines, Moderna, to Haiti, so which will be eligible for 250,000 people. So I, um, the vaccine um, campaign has started. I think we're already at 20,000 people. So I think during the, 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 the crisis in, in the southern departments, I think um, the Ministry of Health will have to come up with a plan to see how they're gonna uh, vaccinate those people. Because I have to tell you, Haitians don't really believe in the COVID. So it's only in Port-au-Prince where we had mo the most cases, but the rest of the country, people even putting a mask, it, it, it was a, a challenge to, to force the people to put a mask. But the, the COVID is there. Um, like you said, a lot of people will be traveling to, to Haiti. The Delta variant, which is very um, dangerous, so I think um, while thinking about the natural disaster, we're gonna need to to reinforce the the measures um, to protect from the COVID. Thank you. Anyone else like to add to that? Okay. Well, I want to just show here again. Well, I have to. Oh. Mm-hmm. Tamara. No, I think that was. I'll Regine. agree with Gia on, on the idea that we didn't. We've been different when it comes to um, COVID. And it, it's not a case that we don't believe that it exists. Obviously, the numbers are real in the United States um, and around the world. So we do believe that part. It's just that here, it seems that we live in germs, unfortunately. The air, the the garbage, the I, I don't know how to put it, the sun. I, tend, I was in the States not too long ago, and this was the way I saw it. Um, in Haiti, we go from our non-air-conditioned home to our non-air-conditioned cars to our barely air-conditioned offices, and we're moving through just heat. We're, we're burning whatever it is that we, are, that we have in us. We're sweating. We, we have, we transpire. So that's one thing. In the States, you go from your air-conditioned home to your air-conditioned car to your air-conditioned office and very little physical activity. So I, I don't know what has made it a difference here in Haiti as to why COVID has, has not made such a humongous wave as it has around the world. Because the one thing I know here is that if people were dying in numbers, the radio stations would have heard it. You would have people calling in like crazy saying, I have five people dead. I smell dead people here. I smell that. And that's not the case. We, we do not wake up in the morning and find any dead bodies in the street. Yes, it was a challenge to get people to wear their mask, but we are wearing masks. For the most part, you will go around and of 10 people, you'll find six people wearing masks. If you go to the open market, you'll find none. 
in all honesty, or at least maybe four. Mm. But COVID is just different here. And, and I get that we've been a, a, an anomaly trying to figure out why that's the case. Trust me, I was in the States and I, I couldn't wait to come back home because I'm like, I need to go home. COVID is stressing me in, in the United States. But here it's, it's just different. You, you wash your hands. I have a cocktail of teas that I drink every day, a cocktail of vitamins that I drink every single day. And I think that's basically what everyone here is doing is we have the natural teas, we have we have the sun, and we're just there. To, we're just blessed. As much as Haiti has seen so much, I have to say this was the, the breaking point where I can say God is still in Haiti because beat COVID, but we did better numbers than COVID than anywhere else around the world. And it's not bragging. And I don't want this to come back to us in any way, shape or form. <laughs> but for everything else that's going on, we at least don't have to deal with COVID the way that everyone else is dealing with COVID. That that, that to me is, is a plus because I can't imagine having COVID on top of all the things we've already mentioned going on in Haiti. It, it's, it would be just unbearable. You would have to say Haiti is truly, truly jinxed. And I refuse to believe Haiti is jinxed. Uh, I will be the last person holding hope for, for us. Uh, I, if I'm here, it's because I believe in Haiti and I have hope that we will see light at the end of this tunnel. And for all intents and purposes, I see the light. There's no way. One way or the other, we get to see Haiti in a positive light. This is just us going through the fire. It no, no, absolutely. And and I and that's why I wanted to just mention it because I do want for anyone who's donating items to also make sure that they're sanitizing as much as possible whatever they're donating. And I know some people had commented about clothes and things like that. Um, if you can afford to make sure you purchase new clothes, that would be great. Um, just because of what we're in with the pandemic, I just want to make sure that we um, encourage people to exercise um, uh, safety and uh, sanitizing uh, protocols when they're making their contributions and um, of, of actual items and clothes and things like that. So um, that's just something I just wanted to point out because we definitely don't want to uh, add to the challenges uh, that Haiti is already facing. And you do have a point, um, the, building the immune system with sun and vitamin D and mm -hmm. all the herbs and vitamins is so, so important. That is the biggest um, uh, ammunition we have against uh, the COVID um, uh, virus is making sure our immune systems are strong. Now, I know we're running short on time, so I wanna kind of just ask in your viewpoint, when we talk about um, stabilization. You know, Haiti's a beautiful country, beautiful people, beautiful soul. Um, and when we talk about stabilization, in your viewpoint, what does stabilization look like? Will Haiti see stabilization anytime soon? How involved should the U.S. government, other uh, governments from the international community be involved in the stabilization of Haiti? And then lastly, if you can add in there, I know it's a lot, um, how do we continue to change the narrative and the perception of Haiti into a more positive narrative and a more positive, um, uplifting and optimistic um, perception? So I'm going to kick it off with Guy. Okay, so um, talking about change and one, one of the things before the, the president got tor tortured and assassinated on July 7th, I was part of the, the, the task force for identification. I have to tell you, we have 25% of the population, um, which is about 3 million people with no birth certificate, no, no um, identification card. So now we, 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 we got this to almost half, 1.5 million people now with birth certificate and identification card, but most of them were in the South in Gadas. So now with those houses destroyed, we're going to have to start again. So that's one. And one thing I can say about um, Haiti, the issues that we were fighting is the integration of everyone. Like here, we, we might have three Haitian Americans. 
So, for example, let's say Gilbert or Tamara or Regine, they want to become president or vice president or be part of the parliament. They can't because they, they don't recognize the dual citizenship and or multi-citizenship. So, so the president and the task team I was, I was part of, which I took upon myself because as a, minister, a former minister of Haitian living abroad and, and seeing how the people treat the Haitians living abroad, like Tama was saying, they, um, the diaspora, the Haitians living abroad contribute more than 30% of our, of, uh, of our economy. But then again, they cannot um, have an important position in the country. So the slogan was, everyone needs to be included. The parliament had 119 um, 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 deputies, only three women. So the president wanted to add 35 seats to, 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 to the Congress. Also, the youth, to become a deputy, you could have become a deputy at 22 years old instead of 25. So those are the type of change. So we wanted the integration of everyone. In 2021, no one has a credit score in Haiti. You need to have contacts to have credit in Haiti. So those type of things, me, I went, I, I had the chance to, to live here in South Florida and which opened my eyes. And now I wanna share what, what, what civilization is like. But in Haiti, it's not the case because in 2021, not everyone has access to credit, but a few people with contacts, you have to be part of the government. You have to be, have, have a big name to have access to credit. So we want those change. And I think um, we, in, in 35 years, instead of having seven elected presidents, we have 20 presidents. So transition has become something normal in the country. So a president can never finish his mandate. So those are, so, so that's what we're talking. When we talk about instability, we're talking about those type of things that they need to stop. So it's, it's an economic and political problem. Well, thank you for um, sharing that insight. Um, Tamara? Yes, I agree with Guy that we have to find ways in Haiti to reinforce the institutions, um, you know, and have the balance of power. In the United States, we have the three branches of government and there is that balance of power. So I believe that in Haiti, uh, we need to find ways to reinforce institutions so that there could be a, a law and uh, a balance of power. I will say that Haiti's uh, history is complex. Um, there's no way within this conversation to go through the complexities of Haiti, the complexities of our history, um, the complexity of, of, the, of our poverty, the depth of our poverty, right? Um, you have 12 million people in Haiti today. Um, we got our independence in 1804 uh, and finished paying reparations of what is believed to be the equivalent of $35 billion to France in 1953. So if you think about that, that's $35 billion. The equivalent today would be $35 billion. That's a lot of money. Um, and so I would say, even though it's a complex issue, the reason why Haiti is indeed one of the poorest countries, um, it, we have to now look beyond that, right, and truly come together. Uh, the diaspora, the Haitians of in Haiti, we need to get come together, find ways to support one another. We need to know what they need so we can provide it for them, and they need to tell us what um, they need so we can support them and walk with them. So I believe the combination of um, the reinforcing the, the, the political institutions, the government of the, the branches of government, as well as the diaspora um, walking hand in hand with the Haitians living in Haiti, I do believe that will lead to stability. Awesome, thank you. Gilbert. Um, I, I, I have a different take on what Tamar just said with regard to the uh, money uh, being sent um, you know, via transfer in Haiti. Um, and that money is not uh, designed to create wealth and to build the country, it goes straight to um, I mean, and we're not producing anything. 
So um, you can't like in all likelihood, it's all good to have the Haitian diaspora supporting the people at home. It is important, but we need to find a way to translate that into something that can be more sustainable in the future. Creating businesses, creating wealth. This is how you get the country out of the uh, the, the the issue that we 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 have here. And we got we're not gonna do it by ourselves. We Haitian have to come together. It is extremely important because unity is the driving force of everything that we do, and it's part of our you know uh, um, you know emblem. And um, and and we know when we unite, when we get together, what we can accomplish together. We have done that um, as evidenced by 1804 and every stage of our history, we have seen when we get together, we do, we achieve great things. So that is important, but we can't do it ourselves. We have to have the support of the international community because they have the financial resources and they also have the, uh, um, you can count on them for the transfer of knowledge and the transfer of technology, which we don't have. We have a lot of resources, uh, for example, in Haiti that we can even exploit today because we don't have the capability to do so. So we need to somehow sit down with them um, and, 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 and negotiate. But how do you negotiate in a position of power if you can't organize you know, your own home? It's almost like you, know, we, 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 you have a family and if the family is fighting each other all the time, husband and, uh, husband and wife and, and, and kids and children and everything, we can't produce anything, right? Um, you hear if the show is not producing viewership, the show will go down the tube. So we are, you look at performance, how well you can get things done and how you can actually modify the things that you've done in the past and optimize the thing that you said it's working well for you. This is where we need uh, uh, what we need to do. And we start also with the kids. They are the future. We can't possibly think thinking about the stabilization and the future of Haiti without having uh, uh, a, uh, a plan on how we are going to build the human capital that we need for the development of the, 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 the Haiti. The, the, the country is not going to develop itself by itself. It's made of people. And the more knowledgeable people are, the more educated people are, the better decision that they make and, 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 and the better things that they can do. So we need to create a government where you know we we uh, uh, understand the challenges and understand the historical complexity that Tamar just talked about. Understand that Haiti is not like any other country. We are unique. We're special, and we need to have uh, um, we need to take that into consideration when we come together. But it start really start at the onset of everything. We have to get together and we need to include everyone, whether you're here in the diaspora, here, or whether you're in Haiti, regardless of the color of your skin, whether you have straight and not here and, and, and not having straight here, whether I don't care what you believe in, whether you are Vaudouisan or you're not, you're Catholic, there's a place for everyone at the table so that we can discuss about our issues. And, and not having anybody to be involved in that process. Because uh, as you can see, when people get involved, the result are usually not the intended result. Uh, um, and, and we need to do that ourselves as Haitian people, come together and then think about the youth, think about the kids, because the future is them. We have a whole generation of uh, um, folks that have gone, um, have not, that, that has not known pretty much anything but corruptions, uh, uh, anything but uh, um, hatred, anything but uh, uh, um, um, creating chaos. And that generation, in that generation, some folks maybe, maybe, maybe uh, uh, reinserted into society, some of them is already lost. So we have to talk about uh, those are you know reality that we need to talk about and 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 go beyond that. 
Um, um, how do we create wealth? How do we put Haitian together to uh, come up with a solution for ourselves? Solution that are endemic to our issues, not solution that are being concocted in some sort of uh, 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 you know chat room in Washington, whatever the case may be. So we are the solution of our problem because we are our problem. Oh, thank you, Gilbert and uh, Regine. You can you can bring it home. <laughs> well, my answer to stabilization, the stabilization of Haiti is education. I, I I can't start anywhere else beside that. And the next thing is security. I I would love to be able to just drive anywhere in this country on a regular basis and do what I'm here to do. Just give me security because with security, I can get education. I can't move. If you can give me security, I'll be the happiest person in the world. Five years ago, I could leave my house at three o'clock in the morning and go to Cabaret and go buy fruits and vegetables and not even think twice about going through Cité Soleil. Today, I won't dare to leave my house at 10 in the morning and not wonder if I'm not going to get kidnapped down the hill. So my point is security is the first thing. The second thing is education. Teach them how to read. Forget everything else. Teach them how to read. Guess what? We have 119 candidates go running for president. And the majority of people that will be voting do not to read. So it's a guessing game as to what is the platform? What is this person running on? What, where do we start? But through education, I, I, I don't know how else to put it. Um, teach adults how to read, prepare kids for their future because they will be the ones running this country in about 15 years and make sure that they have the tools in their hands to make the right, to make better decisions. And I do agree with you. This generation has known nothing more than corruption. But who's at fault? I'll leave my question there. Who's at fault? Mm -hmm. It's not them. The adults are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So we can't blame the kids 15 years from now when we can't stop this. It's not their fault. We did not set the right examples for them. So whose fault is it? Us. We need to take responsibility. At this table that we all talk about, we need to make sure we have engineers. We need to make sure we have people that have studied economy. We need to make sure we have people that have studied politics. We need to have doctors. We need to have professionals who went to school, sat on a bench, and studied their field dealing with the items in that field, education should be run by someone who studied education. Medical, the Ministry of 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 of, 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 of health should be run by someone who who is a doctor. Get people who are responsible and knowledgeable at the table to solve the problems of Haiti. Because if we are not educated we can't make educated decisions. And if they're not educated, they will not be able to make educated decisions in the future. So the job and at the end of the day is be good citizens, be good examples, and let's make sure that everyone at the table is educated in the field that they're supposed, that they're representing. So I'm pushing education and security. Oh. Gee, security, please. <laughs> and Mary, can I add something real quick to uh, piggyback off what Regine just said with sure. regard to um, um, education? Um, I, I do agree with you, uh, uh, Regine, but literacy, um, what, what literacy meant 50 years ago is not what it means today in an ever-changing environment where technology is moving at a very rapid, uh, rapid space. <clears throat> so education should mean giving the people the capability to adapt and change. Those are th those that are able to unlearn and relearn and adapt, those are the ones who are going to be 
the new citizens of the 21st century. And if you can't do that, you're going to get lost. It's not about, you know, knowing how to read only, but having that capability for you to be nimble and, and being able to, to change and adapt to the environment. And that is key. And this is the type of education that we need to give the people because somebody that is 50 years old, okay, you want them to still to be a productive member of society. So you want you want him to be able to do something, not just read something, but to be able to contribute to the advancement of the country. And in order for you to do that is by getting Jebel, give him. me three years. Give me three years, Jebel. Give me three years. Aside from Pennies for Haiti, I'm the executive director of Haiti STEM Alliance. And what we do here is teach children how to code, teach children how to use the internet, teach children how to use technology. We are part of an organization that prepares um, robotic competitions on the ground. We've been doing this for the last 10 years, trust me. But I can't teach a child how to code if they can't read. I have to. No, no, have we're not talking about the children basics. here. Remember, we're not talking about the children here. We're talking about folks that are over uh, 30 years old uh, that are still don't know that that still don't know how to read, still don't know how to uh, uh, write their names. These folks, we need to put them in a position to produce. Right. You have to look at it. Three years, you know, give me three years. I believe you. And, and I believe <laughs> you, you both have education at heart because I believe that we can't get out. One, by getting our act together and be together. Two, and focusing on education because that, how, that is how we're going to get out. We have to educate our folks, we have to educate our people. But we have I'm to do sure you should what well. education for what segment How of the population. How about you come and join me? I will. I will be glad to do so. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, listen. I know we could go on for probably another hour, <laughs> but unfortunately, we are running. We have run out of time, and you all have been just such a wonderful panel of guests and have given us such great insight. I am going to just share um, really quickly here again the links for our audience to uh, see on where they can uh, get involved, donate, whether it's financially or material supplies, etc. Um, so I want to uh, make sure that also you can, you know, not only just look at the link that we send, you can also visit MIA Media Group, that's MIAGRP.com, and you can see uh, there a list of links under the latest news of how you can get involved and where you can go to um, assist with the relief efforts. Of course, if you want to reach um, our panel, uh, they are involved in these organizations that have been posted, um, and you can definitely reach out to them as well um, for more information. And we'll be happy to have our panelists back in the future to give us an update. Stay with me just one moment longer as I, you know, just make some quick announcements. I want to thank our sponsors again, Broward Health, AARP, the Solid Waste Authority of Palm Beach County and African-American Black Alzheimer's Disease Initiative at the John P. Hussman Institute for Human Genomics, University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. Please make sure you save the date this weekend, August 22nd. Um, we will have our new issue of Legacy Magazine that will feature South Florida's 40 under 40 Black leaders of today and tomorrow which will be available August 27th in the Miami Herald, as well as the Sun Sentinel, and of course, digitally at MIAMediaGRP.com. Please remember to tune into our show, Soul, hosted by Ms. Nikki Jellin, every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. as we disseminate intellectual entertainment on fashion, arts, and culture, relationships, mental health, and food in South Florida. Also, um, make sure, again, go to MIA Media Group, um, click on latest news and you'll find all the links that we shared today, as well as um, go there on August 22nd to check out the new issue. And as always, make sure you share this video because there's someone out there that can benefit from this information shared on all of your social media outlets. 
um, share it with your friends, text it to your friends, email it to your friends, however you plan to share. We just want you to share the information. Um, in addition to that, please save the date and join us again next Thursday at noon. Thank you again to our panel and thank you to everyone who has tuned in with us today. Thank you, Anne Marie. Thank you, Anne Marie. Thank you, Anne -Marie. Thank you. have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you.